Alright, I got this cut down just a little. And then now I'm working on this dirty thing. Okay. Very dirty. Knock it down with a wire brush first, and now I'm hitting it with 80 grit. Still clogging up the paper, so I should have hit it a little bit more with the with the wire brush. But whatever, plenty of sandpaper. Uh, I think I might have to weld a little bit because I have. Yeah, I can't see it. Right, oh, right there. Looks like we've got a crack. I just don't trust it. Looks like it cracked right on the spot weld. So buzz that with the welder and then I'll be a little happier. But a lot to do. Alright, so core support is primed. Uh, hopefully one of the final coats on the fenders. Yeah, I still got to work on that. Underside of it though, just did. And then the, uh, the hood louvers and another coat on the hood. And I think I got these doors pretty much worked out. Hopefully this is one of the final coats and got the dash primed. It had a few dings in it that I had to get out and then throw a final coat of primer on it. And put another little coat in the trunk. So uh, getting late. I wanted to try to do a bit of the uh the brake lines. But I haven't got to that. I'll, I'll get another bit of that going. But right now, uh, this is where I stand. I didn't really have a whole lot of time this weekend to get anything done. So these videos are going a little slow. I'm trying to upload what I can though. And try to make it not too awful boring. But that's that and probably going to head home and edit this video and then uh, I guess next weekend I'll be back up here all right so today we got some goodies uh, I got my fuel lines in so I'm gonna throw those on the frame I actually ordered these from uh, uh, the right stuff and they were the wrong stuff three times in a row, so I ended up getting these at inline tube. Uh, I started working on these. I'm gonna probably do a separate video on these. It's gonna take forever to do these, but uh, these are the original red inner fenders. They pretty much look like that. Uh, started seeing them down. I had to, I had to hit these with a pretty heavy grit. I didn't want to. I wanted to start with 400, but I had to go a little heavier. But uh, they had a lot, a lot of pitting. I still need to get these out. Uh, try to get these out as much as I can without thinning the plastic. See if that's possible. I want to reuse these because I don't like the reproductions. I mean, the newer ones are, uh, you know, a lot better than, than the older repops, but I prefer to use the originals, at least that way. You know, the originals go back on the car, and I don't have too much repop stuff on there, but I've got a few things when I went to Carlisle. Uh, actually, we'll start here. This was my dollar bag. This dude, like, wanted to get rid of this stuff, so I got a nice uh, mirror with a map light. This lever right here is broken off, but I have another mirror that I can put that on but pretty much everything in this bag except for the the, uh, the fiber tubing here that was 
that was new stuff, but pretty much everything in the bag was a dollar. You can't beat that. I got a nice, uh, nice pair of door handles. Mine were pretty pitted. These are actually very, very nice for originals. And uh, real nice headlight switch. Actually in really nice shape. It looks like it was barely used, if at all. And then, of course, the mirror. So all that was a buck. So my trip to Carlisle wasn't absolutely worthless. So, this back up. And then, got some goodies here. Uh, oh, yeah, the... brake pedal pads and the uh, clutch pad and then I actually found this used for a buck original uh, AC radiator cap in good shape actually it's missing the rubber around here I have another one of these I can transplant that too, and then got my four core radiator isolators and my clutch boot. And some nice window crank handles, got all those. Got a brake release lever. Clutch for boot. Some nice door ferrules or door whatever. Knobs, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, the parking brake pedal pad. And I, I plan on putting a, uh, a 68 wood grain sport wheel in here. So I think this is. Oh no, these are the. These are the sun visor holders. Got those new. I didn't get the steering wheel, but I ended up getting the uh, the hub assembly for it. And the horn. And then uh, what else we got here? What's this? to do this with one hand oh yeah another sun visor holder and what we got here oh yeah the uh, parking brake bushing for the the parking brake lever the bushing was all worn out so there's one of those and a spare tire rod And the license plate holder. And a battery tray too. I'm not sure where that went. Probably in another bag. Anyway, so there's that. And here in, in a second, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the fuel lines on. So, we'll get to that here in a second. Alright, so here's the frame I've been working on. Uh, it's uh, probably about 80% done. I still have to uh, press some bearings on the axles, get those in, uh, and then I got a control arm and uh, spindle and all that drum to put on that side. I got this one all on. Basically, the issue that I ran into was the original uh, A arm shaft on the uh, on that side. Was, the threads were all messed up, and I didn't want to use it. So I've been having trouble finding an A arm shaft. An original one. I bought one from Napa, and it ended up being offset. I don't want to use that. So this is on hold until I uh, get an A arm shaft. And then basically, the issue I ran into with the fuel lines was I ordered these fuel lines from uh, the right stuff 
and I get them here, totally the wrong ones. I mean, you could tell right out of the box. So I ended up sending those back. They sent me another set, and that set ended up being the wrong one. And plus, they forgot to send me the short one. So, or not the short one, but the, uh, the return line. And so I sent that one back, and then they sent me another one, and it's the wrong one. Uh, from what I can tell, it is actually for that car right there. It's for a 67 Galaxy. And so that's in the box. I basically told them, screw it. Uh, I don't want to deal with them anymore, and I ended up getting these other ones on inline tube, and hopefully these are the right ones. So with these lines here, these are the originals. Uh, I don't know why, but I wasted my time scraping all the, the surface rust and everything off, and then I ended up just painting them. But I just it just bothers me with these on here. Plus the fact that they have major... Well, let's focus here. They have major pitting. And I just, I don't trust them. And I just, with what I'm doing to this car, I don't want to cut corners and put crappy stuff back on. So anyway, there's brand new fuel lines. And get these originals back off of here. And uh, get these new ones on and then I'll feel better that I don't have rusty fuel lines on here. So let's get to it. This might be a little hard to do with one hand, but I'll give it a best shot. Got these off and this I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this with with one hand so give me a second right, get this mainly straight get this adhesive off I got those straightened out but the old ones are on the bottom new ones are at the top so if you're curious about how accurate the inline tube ones are I'd have to say they are pretty damn close I mean I mean yeah they they are pretty darn close All right, so the tough part is getting these through that hole into the frame rail and to come out the front. So I don't think I can do this with one hand. So I'm going to squeeze these in there and then uh, and then record some more. All right, so we got this. Or these uh, these in here. That was fun, and they are sticking out through here. So roughly my assembly manual says to fuel line on the bottom, return line on the top, all the way down, and then clipped here, here, and this damn camera, well, there we go, focus, focus, and then also right here. So let's see how we fit here. Mm -hmm. 
So far, so good. We are touching. We're touching the cross member here for the transmission, so I want to bend this up just a little bit. I don't want it resting against there. And of course, I can't do this with one hand, so I'll be right back. Okay, we have a little bit of clearance here. No more touching. We got that. So the next thing I want to do here is, if my camera will focus, these clamps right here need to get turned to where there's no rubbing against the other hose. I really need to get a GoPro so I can use both hands. Okay, so this one needs to be straightened out a little bit. Okay, the next thing my manual says, these get pulled back. The clamp actually doesn't go over the springs, like I'd figure it would to keep them from doing this number, but I guess uh, or my assembly manual doesn't, doesn't say to put the clamp over these. It says to put it basically right in front of them, which I guess keeps it from sliding back. And I guess these would keep it from sliding forward. So, Alright, well this is really difficult to do with one hand, so I'm going to bolt these up and be right back. Okay, so we got it all in place. Now, I'll just tighten it down. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good fit. So definitely inline tube over the wrong stuff. Well, the right stuff, but it's actually the wrong stuff. All right, not much of a little uh, little video, but I guess I just wanted to show uh, wanted to show inline tubes, fuel lines over the the right stuff because I had so many problems with that other company. But yep, definitely inline tube over the right stuff. <laughs> 